How's it going, folks? I'm Matt, and this is Photo Syntech, and welcome to another episode of The Grow Show. This week, eh, updates, improvements, things have been going rather well. Let's get into it. Alright, so I thought I'd start off this week's update by showing the uh, wonderful veg plants off here. Made a few changes, uh, I culled a couple of plants, and I've got some clones in here now. So let's, let's talk, let's talk, let's show you what's going on. So first and foremost, the one nug run competitor. Um, this is really weak guys, I'm not going to lie. Uh, my red poison uh, from Wildwood. My my best guess, and we've got a lot of humidity going on here right now. Uh, my best guess is this thing just is is a runt, it's just a runty seed. Uh, you get them every once in a while. Uh, I haven't really seen any from Wildwood, but it is what it is. Um, Mr. Timothy's Crab Shack, he also is growing one himself, and it's uh, it's a little runty too. But uh, you know what I've seen from Wildwood directly is he's grown some. They've just been magnificent plants. So I think we just ended up with a runt. So um, <laughs> it's probably a good thing I can't win the the, the one nug run challenge to begin with because uh, I certainly won't. But we've got some other things going on in here. So uh, the far corner there's a freak show male. I had two, but I actually culled one of them because I want to bring some clones in here. Uh, we've got a Big Bertha, or Big Bertha, we haven't had Big Bertha in a long time. We've got the large Marge JMO cut over there. We've got a Critical Mass, we've got two of the Krabby Cushes, a Nanosaur Bay, a couple Orange Dreamers. This is the Strawberry Cush CBD. Uh, it's still re-vegging, so it really hasn't started shooting out much in the way of leaves yet. But uh, keep in mind, this was a fully flowered plant that I took and I cloned and uh, we're re-vegging that because it's just a wonderful CBD. Otherwise, we've got, uh, in the middle here, we've got the two Jupiters from uh, in-house genetics and then Doggy Breath from um, uh, is it Major Bean uh, breeding there. So um, thanks a lot for those beans there, Devin, if you are watching, appreciate that. So these guys, um, these six, well, I'm guessing that at least two of these are males, and I think the two in the corner here, just because they are the taller ones, of course they could just be more vigorous. Um, we are gonna try and sex these here very soon and figure out what we've got, because I do wanna keep a couple of males. I'm gonna do a pollen run with these males. Well, maybe just one of them, we'll have to see. And then the rest of the ladies, they're all heading out to the flower room to get flowered. So uh, why don't we head out there now, because I got a couple of things going on out there that I wanna talk about, wanna show you, and uh, some really good news to share. So let's, uh, let's head out there next. And here we are outside. So uh, what are we looking at first? Of course, the uh, empty bed that I took down last week, this had the blackberry cush and the apple cup in it. That stuff is now dried and has been uh, put into some grove bags. If you're not familiar with grove bags, I suggest you Google them. They are the latest craze hitting the grow world. Uh, no sponsorship, in fact, they, they wouldn't talk to me on Instagram. Um, it's unfortunate because I wanted to have them on for an interview to find out how their uh, miraculous new technology works. Uh, again, go check it out. Uh, I mean, I'll even throw a link down in the description in there, um, show them some love, just because I think it's such a cool product. So yeah, we're sitting here empty for probably another, well, I'm gonna guess, week, week and a half. I wanna give uh, some time between this run and this run, which we'll talk about in just a second, to space out, because I like running this perpetual space. So we're going to uh, put the, the doggy breath and Jupiter uh, females in here. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I might end up with six plants, who knows if they're in, uh, all uh, female. So I'll manage those appropriately. I've done a to six in in one of these beds before it's just a little tight to manage but over here we've got the apple cup and uh oh, let's kick off the, humidity, the exhaust for a second we've got the uh, apple cup and we've got more of the blackberry kush guys these are both amazing plants you've seen them uh, growing here a couple times we're gonna keep growing them because well the wife really loves the apple cup and uh, I, i'm very very impressed with the amount of pain relief it helps with uh, i've got those lower back issues that's why i'm a medical grower to begin with and this is really helps take the edge off that pain uh, otherwise the black Berry Kush is just an amazing squish. It tastes fantastic, and I love it. Fiberglass trellis. Um, one of the cool things I wanted to chat about here, and let's just bring this video down a little hot. 
This fiberglass cello system that I came up with these uh, with these rods works like a charm. Let's cut over to some uh, video here. I did a little time lapse as I took down the plant, and you can see this system was super easy to pull apart. Uh, it took a little bit to build. Took a little bit of time to build. It wasn't as easy as just putting together the uh, you know the regular nylon uh, trellis net like I've got hanging over there on the wall. Uh, but yeah, it's it worked just total charm. I was able to get all the plants out, get the plants. Down, down. I didn't uh, have to do anything. I was able to hang them whole. So we got the four nanosaur bay down. Now those came down on day 49. Those were about two weeks early because of the thrips issue that I'm going to discuss here in a minute. Now what I'm going to do with these nanosaur bays is I think I'm actually going to take and over dry these. Get these super dry to the point where they're perfect for doing dry sifting. Haven't done a lot of dry sifting. Done a little bit using the trim bin and I like to do a little bit more. So that's that's the plan in that regard. Now, otherwise, the Orange Dreamer and the Krabby Kush under the Mars Hydro FCE 4800 Mars. Appreciate you guys. Big sponsor of the channel. Give them some love, guys. Uh, their new FC 8000 is pretty crazy looking, I must say. So, we've got real nice flat even canopy here for the uh, Orange Dreamer, but the Krabby Kush, she's a little bit more stretchy and stuff, and I'd, I'd like to actually get this spread out a little bit, but I haven't put any trellis in here. I don't think I'm going to put trellis in here. This Orange Dreamer doesn't really need a trellis system, and it, it works itself out, but I would like to get these pulled apart. Just a little bit better light penetration. I've done defoliation in here twice now, pulled off a ton of leaves, and I know it doesn't really look like it. I mean, you can see in here, these plants are looking fantastic. They're starting to bud up. Uh, this Orange Dreamer is... You know, one of my absolute favorite plants. It's got such a crazy good terpene profile, but um, you know, is what it is. Now, the one thing that I didn't talk about yet, and the one thing that I did want to talk about, is the big news: is we appear to have eradicated the thrips. Fingers crossed. I, I'm hoping so. Now, of course, unfortunately, I had to do this with spraying. Now, uh, I, I try to avoid spraying anytime I can, avoid it at all costs, but after five months of fighting with thrips and several hundred dollars in beneficial insects that really did help control them, I wanted to make sure I got rid of them. So I saw the opportunity with this run coming down and these dinosaur bays, which I'll be honest, aren't really anything special. Um, I pulled those down early and because these girls were still early enough in uh, in flowering, I was able to spray. So this entire space has been sprayed. And I also brought all my veg plants in from the indoors. I sprayed all those as well. So we have eradicated thrips. Fingers crossed. I hope so. I'm hoping I'm not saying there's something different next week. But I'm feeling really good about it. I am feeling really good about it. And the other thing is, I didn't kill off all of the biology in here either. The thing about thrips is... Yes, they do play in a pupil stage down in the soil itself. For the most part, they're a leaf-dwelling, plant-dwelling type pest. So by spraying, or I should say fogging, with this Dr. Doom Green Planet Fogger, it's, it's basically gotten rid of uh, everything here. And anything that was living in the soil, well, I've seen still, still seen springtails. I've seen rove beetles and whatnot. We've got the avocados in there for them to hide in. And we've even got a ton of worms here. I've got a, let's just show you guys in case we haven't done avocado tech here in a while. So yeah, you can see I got one avocado here that they're moving in into and the other ones here yeah there's just there's a bunch of worms in there super happy super happy worms so uh, guys trips are gone uh, one nut run is going poorly and uh, otherwise a whole bunch of other stuff going a uh, quick shout out to some of the one nut run sponsors uh, we got Niwa with the grow hub in there we got Mars Hydro with the FC or sorry TS 1000 and uh, Fertigation uh, manager, the basic system from GrowTech. So guys, um, links down below. Go check those guys out for sure, especially GrowTech. Uh, we did an interview there with DJ not too long ago. It was just a great chat and a real, real cool system. Otherwise, I am Matt. This is Photosyntech. Guys, we out. 